Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, A. Joe Torn Love. Here's your AW Diamond review for August 25th, 2021. Uh, was a okay show um, for Dynamite. Uh, wasn't a lot, but still had some hot points. We'll go over uh, Single Punk. He made his AW Dynamite review. He dropped a big hint. In an interview with Tony Schiavone, we also got Malachi Black, his second match in AEW against Brock Anderson. We'll go over all that as well as the other semifinals and the Eliminator Tournament for to determine number one contender for tag team titles at All Out versus Young Bucks between Varsity Blondes and Luch Brothers. Go over all that. So again, thank you for joining me. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button anytime during the video, as well as click that subscribe. If you want to see more on the channel, as well as pro wrestling reviews or smart to review topics, it, overview of topics, etc. But without the way, let's get into the review shall we so the show started off with Matt Hardy for Orange Cassidy this I mean if you watch Dark and you develop some of the undercard tactics this feud has been kind of rallying especially escalating from their six man tag for Matt Hardy and Orange Cassidy. So it was one on one, no Hardy family office, no best friends there. This was a good, okay match for what it was. Uh, Matt Hardy got busted open. I'm not sure from what, but was okay to start. So they got to exchange between the Delete and Orange Cassidy Super Kicks, which if you enjoyed, you enjoyed. I thought it was okay. I mean, nothing will top the Orange Cassidy Sting moment for me, but it was okay. So... Orange Cassidy, he knocked out a bunch of money in Mallory's hand, picked up a $100 bill, put it in his pocket, then went for a suicida on Matt on the outside, but Matt Hardy caught him and delivered a side effect on the outside of the ring. Then they were back in the ring. Hardy dropped a leg drop for a near fall. Crossbody and a tilt world DT by Orange for a two count. Then, in Orange Chassis fashion, I thought it was going for a splash, but he made. So it was good fashion. A lazy Orange Chassis senton off the top rope. Then. Orange Cassidy hit a twist of fate of his own and then for a two count and then followed up with the win. Um, Orange Cassidy gets another victory. Uh, it hopefully ends the Orange Cassidy Matt Hardy saga. Um, but Orange Cassidy, I don't know. I have to see where he goes from here. I would like some direction. So. We had Chris Jericho. He was out in the ring. Uh, he made a proposal to MJF for one last match. This was interesting because with the way the finish felt 
last week. And then just the way it wasn't at all out, but now we're getting probably another match between Jericho and NJF. And Jericho said that if he loses, he will never wrestle in AEW again. So MJF came out with a shirt that said MJF 3 Jared Blow as in Jericho 0. That was a nice touch. For a second I said Warlow. So I was confused but said Jared Blow. So yeah so MJF accepted I'm better than you, and you know it. So, we're getting this match again all out, it seems. And Jericho, I mean, for it to be his last match, now, quote, he said AEW. Just thought. So he didn't say anywhere. He said he'll never wrestle on AEW again and stick to commentary for AEW. So now Jericho, you know, he was kind of the guy to put AEW on the map, really. He really brought that attention to AEW by being its first champion. And he's pretty much done it all in AEW. And considering his 30 year anniversary was last year of wrestling. And with Fossey, you don't know, you know, with all the things he's got. It's a question because, again, he only said AEW. So, you know, he could go back to New Japan if he wanted to for something or go through the Forbidden Door. But I mean, what is Jericho left to do in AEW? So, I think it's the right decision. This will only put MJF up more to be the guy that ended Jericho's in ring career and sent him to the desk so permanently. So it's just conflicting if you're a Jericho fan, but at the same time, you know. Kind of right to do. So then we had the other semifinals of the Tech and Tal Eliminator Tournament between the Varsity Blondes versus Lucha Brothers. The winner will face Jurassic Express on Friday, Rampage. To determine the number one contenders for the tag team titles at all. Out. This is fine for what it was, you know, varsity bonds. They're so young as a tag team. Which brothers we know their history. One of the best tag teams in the business. And kind of feeling where it's going to go, considering. Varsity Blondes, they still have room to grow. Lucha Brothers, we know they're established, they're back. And with this intertwinely storyline with Andrade and Pac, it's interesting to see where they go on Rampage. But still, it was good. So they were on the outside. 
Serio super kicks to the blondes from the bros. Then a assisted suicida by Phoenix, thanks to Penta. But I'm not sure if it was coincidence or it really was orchestrated as such. But Phoenix went for suicida and then Penta kind of just propelled him a little bit, but propelled him on to Marcy Bonds on the outside. Then back in the ring was Pillman and Brian Pillman Jr. and Phoenix. He had a powerbomb on Phoenix for a near fall. Then a springboard forearm by Garrison for a two count. Then the Lutz brothers got the victory with a super kick to Garrison, which took him out. And an assisted pile driver fought on Pillman for the win. Afterwards, Jurassic Express were in the crowd. Then he came in the ring. Young Bucks were on the stage. Getting a seat. They came down. And shoved Jurassic Express into the Lutz Brothers because they were having kind of a stare out, a shake of hands, and that's what set them off. And then we had Serial Suicidas on the Lutz, on the Young Bucks into the Good Brothers, so really curious and should be interesting. Jurassic Express versus the Lutz Brothers Friday for Rampage. Winner faces the Young Bucks at All Out in a steel cage. Then we got Jamie Hayter, who hasn't wrestled on Dynamite in years. Against Red Velvet. Now this was Red Velvet's first match. Since losing to Britt Baker. For the Women's Championship. On Rampage. On its debut. This match felt kind of sloppy. I'm not sure what it was. Maybe it was just chemistry. Something was off. But. Hater won with a big lariat. For the win. I mean, Hater, if she's going to be Britt Baker's backup, she kind of has to be a little credible. So, and this is her first match in years on Dynamite. So, get her the win. This match was kind of eh, but yeah. Chris Sattler came down for the save on Red Velvet. Her and Britt Baker has stared out and they exchange and really interesting. And Chris Sattler, she held up the championship only signifying because I haven't seen it confirmed, but it's all but confirmed. Chris Sattler versus Britt Baker for the AW Women's Championship all out should be fun. So then we had a Dark Order backstage segment. Even though he was upset how Reynolds and Silver saying come with them uh, in their match against Good Brothers. And Alex Reynolds, he was kind of taken by and kind of upset. So he told Evil went off, saying they're the reason why we haven't seen Hangman Page in weeks. And the Uno said to just stay back in John Silver's shadow. And Reynolds stormed off, 
and Silvers went after him, and Uno apologized, but Grayson was not having it. I mean, all I was pretty much thinking about was because with the history between CM Punk and Cole Cabana, I was just thinking, because CM Punk said he has scores to settle, and probably no bigger score to settle than with Cole Cabana with their history, and them being in the same building, it's just intriguing, but we'll see. So then we had Tony Schwani every CM Punk. Good reaction. I mean, obviously it wasn't as big as Friday, but so good. It felt like the Milwaukee crowd was a little out of it. Maybe they were just sitting there for a long time. Not quite sure. Maybe it's the weather. You know, it gets a little colder nearing because we're kind of steering from summer, kind of getting into a bit to the fall, and then eventually winter. So it's may, maybe getting colder in Milwaukee. I'm not sure, but so CM Punk was in the ring. He said, "You guys are being a little bit loud." So, calm down. So, he asked what, why he was bad. So, he brought up names like Penta, Phoenix, Brian Pillman Jr., etc. He praised Darby, said he was good, said he was tough, said he has heart. And that September 5th at All Out... He said, it's not about proving the haters wrong. It's about proving him right. So then he lastly said a mess. Say, I love you to his wife, April, at home. You know, Britt Baker was asked about AJ Lee or April, CM Punk's wife, and you know, with Punk now being in AEW, it's a question of will she join him? Will she join AEW now and be a part of the women's division? I don't know. That's your status, but I don't know. But the big hint, which got people buzzing, probably mostly, was so during this promo and interview, the crowd was chanting loudly, yes, you know, yes, chance, yes, yes. And then Punk said that someone else's stick, shtick. And that you're going to have to be a little bit patient. More patient. So that, you know, Dan O'Brien was a big hint. Because, I mean, you know the rumors of him being signed to AEW. That only helped, I must say. So, that was funny. So then we had Miro... Um, he got a promo backstage. He talked about how he forgave Fuego del Sol, but there's a real sinner out there. A. Kingston. So he called out A. Kingston and said, bring me the Mad King. Because I am the Redeemer. Another great pro by Miro. And this may be what Miro does at All Out. 
Miro for Sandy Kingston. I'm down for it. I am down for it. Miro for Sandy Kingston. Although I hate to see A. Kingston lose. Miro has just been built so strong since moving away from Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. So, just be a fun match to have for All Out. So, then John Moxley, A. Kingston, just mentioned, and Darby Allen versus the Wingmen. Ryan Nemeth, Cesar Benoni, and J.D. Drake. I mean, like I said before, I skim through dark. Sometimes I watch clips and parts of A.W. Dark. The Wingman, you know, Ryan Nemeth and Cesar Benoni, you know, they got something. They got charisma, they got they got the look. They just have to build more in the ring. And JD Drake, you know, I heard before his match against Darby that he's really talented. And you know we'll see, but this just felt kind of odd because the wingmen still have ways to go, even though they're kind of growing on me. So, was kind of a beat down by Mox of Cesar, and then hot tag to A. Kingston, he got the advantage back. J. Drake was in. Darby hit an avalanche code red. Sting scared off Pierre Avalon, who was at ringside. Ryan Nemeth caused a weak. I'm not sure what he was going for, but he slept a chair. In the ring multiple times because he was upset in a temper tantrum in front of Kingston and Moxley and the referee, and he got beat up by Moxley and Kingston, so he went back into the ring. Darby hit a stunner. And a coffin drop on J.D. Drake for the win. Afterwards, a sneak attack by Daniel Garcia on Darby Allen. I thought maybe we'd see CM Punk, but nope, that's not the case. So, Darby or it was like a hit run. Garcia left. So perhaps we're still going to get a match between Darby and Garcia. I mean, Garcia, still really young. He has to improve, but clearly they see something in him. And he still has to show it more. So then Kenny Omega came out with Don Callis, Michael Nakazawa, and Randy Color. So they were out, and which seems to be like a running gag. Tony Schwani supposed to be a real, but Don Callis took the mic out of Tony's hand. And Don Callis said that K Omega will take down and they will take down Chris Cage out out. So Christian's music hit. He was on the stage. 
So for those who don't know, Chris Cage, he retired the TNA Heavyweight Championship on Impact. So he's left with just the Impact Heavyweight Championship, which is obviously the lesser appealing of the two championships. But I mean, they're called Impact, not TNA really anymore. So, and it was a belt that Moose revived for the unification belt versus Rich Swan. So, oh well. So Christian pulled up a video of how Don Callis, who signed Christian Cage, gave him his first break, manipulated a 10-year-old Kenny Omega. So Don Callis called height and hot and that was a freakishly weird pink suit that he wore just very weird but so he was pissed at Christian so Kate said that at 10 years old he was better than Christian was at 20. And he said, You think you know me? You think you know me? Hint, hint, edge. But that was a nice touch. Funny touch by K Omega. So they attacked Christian. And Kazarian, he was saved. He saved Christian, and that was kind of how the segment ended. So, look, Christian Cage versus K Omega will be a good match. I have no doubt. But with the feud and the build, it's not really working, and. But I get it because with CM Punk's first match back, they don't want a huge world title match. They just want a good but not great world title match at All Out. And thus inserts K Omega and Christian Cage. So we get it, but we'll see. So John Moxley, he announced that because weeks ago he sent a FedEx a contract to be signed from New Japan for him to have an opponent at All Out. So people were speculating, you know, Os Osprey, you know, he returned at Resurgence for New Japan, for New Japan Strong. Hiroshi Tanahashi, you know, they've been kind of teasing that match. And, you know, Tanahashi, he won the IWGP US title from Mox, or excuse me, Archer. But no, Satoshi Kojima, who a former IWGP heavyweight champion, 
who I looked on his Wikipedia. He is 50 years old. And I mean, he's a veteran in New Japan. It's just underwhelming and kind of pissed me off in a way. In the sense that, A, you were kind of teasing this match with Tanahashi. And B, Archer had some relevance. And he took that towel off Tanahashi or for Tanahashi, and now he's for the Sam show for New Japan Strong. So it's like, yeah, but it's underwhelming for John Moxley's all out opponent. We had the factory first the gun club and I didn't take notes on it. I just didn't feel like it. So then we got the main event, Malachi Black for Sprock Anderson. We kinda had a feeling where this was going and considering the time left, because I looked, you know. How much time is left for this match? And pretty much figure what is going down. So, I mean, we all know who's going to win. But what fashion would be? Now, this is great because this is... Kind of Black's first big entrance in front of a bigger crowd. Because, you know, with Daly's Place, you know, that view, that crowd, considering how long it was in Daly's Place for over a year, and now it's back on the road, it just felt strange. But... Now, to, tonight in Milwaukee, it just felt better from the view standpoint. Great entrance from Black. So, he ditched those shorts for his usual trunks, which, I mean, I didn't mind. You know, it was kind of the more kickboxer like look. It's just different, but so Brock came out and he took the fight to Black to start. He took him down, welded on him with some shots, fought him in the corner. But Black followed up with a knee. And some kicks in the corner, some hard shots you can hear them. And then all of a sudden, the Sin Eater, which used to be the Black Mass, which is now the Sin Eater, swift, easy, like that. For the win, and he was staring down Arn Anderson, Brock's father, at ringside. One, two, three. So that was it. Quick and easy for Malachi Black. So. Then for. So. Arn went to check on his son, and then Black then got a chair and went to go back in the ring and use the chair. 
But Arn saw it, told him to ditch the chair and fight like a man. So, Black ditched the chair. He went for a sin eater, but Arn blocked it. And then Black hit a low blow on Arn and then hit the sin eater. Laid out Arn Anderson. And it was a great visual to see Black in the distance. And then you see Arn and his son Brock laying down defeated side by side, father and son. That was just a great visual. So then all of a sudden we hear Lee Johnson's music hit. And they came out for the save. And or actually just got in the ring and black left. Went up the stage and we know the next match for Malachi Black. I don't think it'll be at all out. You know, Black first versus Lee Johnson. It just doesn't seem like a pay-per-view match. Perhaps we get this next week and Cody does something and then we get the rematch. Out, out we'll see but nonetheless that was the uh, episode for you guys or the review for you guys uh, okay show besides black punk and the semifinals between the blondes and the blue brothers wasn't much but hope you guys enjoyed it if you did click that like again or the subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you. I'll be back next week. Or I'll be back Saturday. For your AW Rampage review. And then next week with AW Dynamite. So thank you. Be safe. Peace.